ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم ان زلزله الساعه شيء عظيم عباد الله my dear respected elders brothers and sisters as we meet once again in this beautiful house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another jum'a we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us the chance to witness another week while we are healthy and strong so many of our beloved ones who are who are with us in the last jum'a today they're in the hospitals and some have already been buried so to so ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ni'mah of health and the time that he's giving you for you to prepare for your akhirah ask yourself are you using your time well or are you letting it or, or are you letting the time pass just like the heedless people the heedless person without you striving to build your akhirah our khutbah today will revolve around safeguarding ourselves and prepare and preparing for the day of departing this world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in surah al-ghafir يا قوم انما هذه الحياه الدنيا متاع وان الاخره هي دار القرار او ماي بيبل ذس وورلد لايف از اونلي تيمبوري انجويمنت اند انديد ذا هي افتر ذات از ذا هوم اوف بيرماننت سيتلمنت ريممبر ان ذس وورلد يو جست باسينج ثرو اتس نوت يور بيرماننت ريزيدنس يو ار لايك ا ترافلر هو ستوبس فور ا فيري شورت تايم ان ذس وورلد ويز ا لوت اوف ريسبونسيبيليتيز and your destination is akhirah imma jannah wa imma jahannam so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all and our parents jannatul firdaus amin ibadallah no sure for no this for sure if iman and certainly fills one's person's heart then they will be watchful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and naturally fear allah the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naturally builds in them because they have strived to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will take a person to a certain level in his life in his deen afwan in his in his deen to appoint the iman reaches to a level of ihsan excellence and that is as described in a hadith by jibril alayhi salam an ta'bud allah ka annaka tarah fa in lam takun tarah fa innahu yarak to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him for even though you do not see him he sees you rawah al bukhari remember this your clock is ticking and it's ticking very fast your clock is ticking and it's ticking very fast faster than you can fathom so make sure you make wise decisions while you still have the little time left in this world la yanfa'u nafsun la la yanfa'u al insan لا ينفع الانسان في قبره الا التقى والعمل الصالح nothing will help or nothing will be of help to anyone in his grave except his piousness and good deeds يا من بدنياه اشتغل او يو هو هاف بين كيبت بيزي وذ ذس وورلد وغره طول الامل اند لونج هوبس هاف ديسيفد يو وقد مضى في غفله حتى دنا منه الاجل and he proceeded in heedlessness until the end of his life approached al maut yati baghtatan death comes suddenly wal qabr sunduq al amal and the grave is the box of deeds that is what is going to be predicting your fate 
Not realizing this, our, our sins are making us suffer in silence and, and in public. Any type of sins that you do, be it public, sometimes you might be punished publicly. But the sins that you do while you're by yourselves, the punishment is given to you silently. You're punished silently, you're the only one suffering and nobody can see it. You're struggling with stress because of your own sins. You're struggling with depression because of your own sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might not even give you any type of sickness, let's say any illness because of your sins. But the, the heart is in a state of distress and stress. Only you are suffering. You're sitting next to people. You're laughing with them. But deep inside, you are suffering to the, to the fullest. Today, if someone just gives you a, a million shilling, for example, will you not thank him and for the rest of your life and be loyal to him? Just a gift. Somebody comes to you and tells you, Yeah, Muhammad, take this. It's just from my heart and I want you to have it. You will have an immense feeling of love towards that person. A certain feeling of loyalty that you feel, even if he calls him in the middle of the night, I will respond to that person. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave you who gave you the gift of life. You're breathing without any charges. Today, if somebody, somebody gets sick, look at this. It's a, it's a very clear example. If you get sick, you go to the hospital. Don't they charge you for the oxygen that you're, you're inhaling? A human being is charging you for the, for, the, for, the, for the little oxygen that you're inhaling, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you all this for free. But in return, what do you do? Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves to be obeyed and praised from time to time on our daily basis? Because of the ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, has given us, why is it hard for us to fight our own nafs? Why do we let our nafs control us rather than we controlling it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us Surah Al-Yusuf, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٍ and I do not acquit myself. Indeed, the soul is persistent in joiner of evil. Except those upon which my Lord has mercy. Indeed, my Lord, is, my Lord is forgiving and merciful. Start a new life. Any sin that you see or any sin that you're currently committing, leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And see how your life will change. Be it smoking. Be it riba be it zina and so and so forth and the biggest problem that we, have, we are facing currently at the moment is the, the, the effects of social media, our eyes when you're by yourself, you have your phone, you're sitting by yourself nobody's watching you, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you'll surf through any page that you can go through and nobody will, you know, will tell you anything, you're by yourself you know, you're, you feel like you're safe not thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees each and everything that you do. Your eyes are the gates to your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks into, into your heart and not, what is, or not, and not like how your skin is, what color your skin is, how good looking you are, are you tall or are you short. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't care about that. He, look, he cares about what is inside your heart. So the gates to your heart is your eyes. If you, if you want to destroy your heart, you will not safeguard your eyes. But if you want to protect your heart, you will safeguard your eyes. So safeguard your eyes and automatically you will feel the sweetness of Iman. This is a natural thing. Look at this, uh, look at, uh, look at this example. In Ramadan, how pious most of us become. Because we are fasting, right? We fear to open any type of... Uh, you know, we fear to surf any type of pages online and maybe watching any music videos or anything online, let's say. We avoid it. How is our state in Ramadan? Don't you feel a certain feeling of calmness and peace that you don't find this feeling on any other month? If I'm wrong, you, lie, you, you, you tell me. If I'm wrong, you tell me. Why can't we live the life that we're living in Ramadan and continue living that life throughout the year. One main thing that I want to come back to it, and one main thing that has affected our society now is social media. It's being sold. It's being sold. It's 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 like it's like a platform that is being uh, it's being used to sell soft porn, 
sorry to say to use this word but it's good to open up and say things openly and for, unfortunately this ummah is this ummah is suffering from it even if we say we give it a blind eye or it's just a thing we're passing through we don't put so much care to it but the ummah is suffering from this social media so many of our sisters may allah forgive them and guide them have fallen victim into this filthy trap of shaitan the trap of creating or the, the, tra the, the, the trap of creating such contents online be it lip syncing to music dancing to music and boasting it shaitan comes to you or sh shaitan comes to a person and whispers to you and especially let's say let's start with our sisters and then we'll come to our, our, our brothers also this applies both to the sisters and the brothers also but the fitna that we have these days and the fitna that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet told us about this fitna that has been in the previous generations even the gener uh, even in the time of uh, Banu Israel was the fitna of women Shaitan comes to you whispers to you and tells you you know you can be an influencer that's how it starts the second step when he has put you in that category of you know I am an influencer you can be a hijabi tutorial uh, uh, tutorial influencer or slowly you become a hijabi makeup artist right or wrong don't we see these videos on our daily basis on our social medias you open your video the first thing pops the first thing pops in your mind or the first thing pops in your screen sorry is a video of a muslim sister doing a b c d and so on and so forth then slowly he comes to you and tells you dance it's okay you're wearing a hijab there's no problem just post it you know you still covered yourself and slowly and slowly until you end up being so deep in it that it becomes very hard for you to come out of it until at the end you end up showing uh, you, you end up showing up your uh, you, you end up showing off your beauty and your bodies online and shaitan keeps making them feel like they're on top of the world and everyone around them is revolving around them like going around and you know commenting and the likes and this is a, this is what shaitan plays with people's minds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَأَعْمَالَهُمْ فَصَدَّهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ فَهُمْ لَا يَهْتَدُونَ And shaitan has made their deeds pleasing to them and averted, and averted them from his way so they are not guided. And all this is a result of following our own desires. Be it a man, a be it a, a female or a male, Whoever is posting themselves online, showing off their bodies, another one is in the gym, a guy is showing off his, you know, I don't know, biceps and packs and all those things. All this because of what? Riya, showing off, wanting that attention. This is shaitan playing with your mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran, uh, Or another ayah, have you seen the one who takes his God as his own desire? A person who follows his desire is like as if he's worshipping his desires. Because his life revolves around it. Every day, he doesn't feel the kick in his, in his, in his, in his daily life. Until he posts himself, he gets the attention, be it good posts or bad posts. So be very careful what you post online. And these things will come in the day of Qiyamah. And all those, and those people who are watching you in the, uh, in, on social media will come in the day of Qiyamah as shuhada in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person will be told, you were doing such and such in this day, he'll say no. And nasu shuhada. The people will stand up and say, Ya Allah subhanahu Ya Allah, this person was doing A, B, C, D. And he was one of the reasons that I went astray. Ask yourself, why do you feel like Allah has deserted you? Nasullah fanasiyahum. They forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah forgot them. You will feel lonely even if you're sitting in, next to your loved ones. Because of what? Because of your sins. You will feel lonely while you're surrounded by your family and friends. Why is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Zukhruf, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقِيِّضُ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينًا and whoever is blinded from the remembrance of Allah, the most merciful, we appoint for him a devil and he is to him a companion. And this is an ayah in the Quran. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attaches, att attaches to you a devil who becomes your companion, your daily companion. You leave your house, the shaitan, that specific devil is your friend. He's going out with you. In everything that you do, he's beside you. Why? It's because you stayed away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَصُدُّونَهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ and indeed, the devils avert them from the way of guidance while they think that they are rightly guided. How many of us are doing things without caring and we think that we're in the right path? And at the end you come and realize, wait, I was doing wrong. That is a result of that shaitan, the companion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set for you, who was always beside you and guiding you to the wrong path while you think that you're in the right path. Change now. Change now. You're running out of time. Imagine you're dying and people posting your half-naked pictures and writing, rest in peace. At the time you're in your grave, even the smallest deed you need in your, in, while you're in your grave, the smallest deed, rather than having that deed, somebody may be giving a sadaq on your behalf. Instead, you're getting sins piled up in your, uh, in your banks, you would say like that. Just as they sadaqatul jariyah, when you give out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's say you helped in building a masjid, you dug a well, people are, taking, people are drinking water from it for free, you'll get the thawab even if you leave this world. You're in your qabr, you have gone uh, into another life, but because of the sadaqatul jariyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts for you each and every deed from the sadaqatul jariyah that you left back. Now imagine what you left back was the sins. The sins that you, nobody can help remove them online, for example. Maybe you had a social media page. Nobody knows the password to it. So even though your loved ones cannot even delete your own videos. When people keep sharing, those people who don't, you know, don't have the iman, they'll keep sharing your half-naked pictures or your dancing videos and say, uh, rest in peace, I really miss you, and so on and so forth. You keep on getting the sins piled up, piled up again and again. Is that the life you want? Ask yourself. Remember this, always death will certainly come and it comes suddenly without any warning or notice. You want to change your, way, <clears throat> you want to change your ways, you have to strive towards it. You cannot just sit and say, you know, I'm chewing or I'm, so, I'm smoking or anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide me. No, it doesn't work like that. If you do not strive towards being closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help will come to you. In that ayah, Nasullah Fanasiyahum. They forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgot them. And what will your state be if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgot you? In a hadith, in a hadith of Anabi Hurayr radiallahu anhu, Qal Qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Akthiru dhikri hadim illa dhad al maut. Rawahu al tirmidhi wa al nasai wa sahahahu ibn hibbani. Remember more often the destroyer of pleasure, which is death. I will give you simple things that you might, if you do, might help you come, come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave any bad habits that you had in the past. One of them is waking up at night and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging him for him to guide you. Begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again and again. Dua. And the second thing which I believe has been very effective for me personally also, and I believe it will, effect, it will be more effective also on you. Try your best. Every week, take a day to go and visit the graveyard. Keep your phone away. Stop taking snaps in the graveyard. Don't be an influencer in the graveyard. Just go for yourself. Go spend time in the graveyard. Even if it's to clean a grave of your loved one. Yes, we have those people who are cleaning. Help them clean the graveyard. Call them and sit there and contemplate. This is the place I'm coming to next. Am I prepared for this day? Am I ready for this day? Sometimes you realize when you go and bury some people, and when you go and bury someone, You'll see people starting talking about business when they're in the graveyard. That is how 
sad the state of this ummah is. Someone is being buried, you're busy with your phone. Someone is being buried, you're busy taking a snap and posting it and sharing it. Rather than sitting there or standing there, afwan, standing there and contemplating, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you husnul khatim. Husnul khatim. Remember more often the destroyer of pleasure, which is death. Try visiting the graveyard as I told you and see how your life will change. If you know there is something that pushes you to do a certain sin, that's the third thing I want to mention here, that will help you to leave your bad habits. Let's say if you, if you know a certain social media is the reason for you to go and watch something filthy, be it music videos, being women or being whatever it is, or for, for the sisters being going to watch men and all that, get rid of it. You don't need it. Unless it's for business, keep a phone for business. The social media is, that, is in that phone and keep that phone aside. Unless you want to post a business, po uh, unless you want to post a business post, post it and that's it. Don't, don't walk around with it. Why? The Salaf, they had this habit whenever they saw that Iman was, hard, was a bit you know, uh, low, they used to go far away. In a mosque where a mosque is deserted, they would sit and do ibadah by themselves and stay there for some time just for the sake of their own iman. Me and you were living in, the, in this big city. You come out of the mosque, just walk down there, you'll, you'll, just, you'll see naturally you're falling into sins by, watching, by, by looking at someone maybe not dressed well or anything. And that is shaitan. Safeguard your eyes, lower your gaze and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always guide you to the right path. My dear brothers and sisters, hold yourselves accountable before you are held accountable. And weigh your deeds before they are weighed for you in the day of Qiyamah. And prepare for the great day that you will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for today you have and for today you have a chance to do any deed, be it good or bad, without any recompense, and tomorrow will be the day you will be held accountable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A day that will be 50,000 years long, the day of Qiyamah. In the same, in the same day, the earth and the mountains will be lifted up and crushed with one blow. The sky will be torn apart and you will be then, and you will be then presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and none of your deeds will be concealed. Everything will be open except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to cover their deeds. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru inna huwa al-ghafuru rahim wa huwa al-barru al-kareem. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah amma ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters, before I finish my khutbah, I want to touch up some of the points about the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what it comes with. O servant of Allah, Know that, that the sins that are reason of your hardship in your life. And Allah stated this clearly in Surah Al-Talaq. And whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will provide for him, for him a way out. And he will, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for him from where he does not accept, expect. That is, if you have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is sufficient for him. Indeed, Allah will accomplish his purpose. Allah has already set for everything a decree extent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Indeed, those who fear their Lord and seen will have forgiveness and great reward. And they are the ones who regularly turn back to Allah. This doesn't mean that they do not sin, but they repeatedly on a daily basis repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And paradise will be brought near for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, And paradise will be brought near to, to, to the righteous, not far. It will be brought near to the person who is a righteous person. This is what... Uh, and they will be in, in, and it will be said to them this is what you were promised for every return to Allah and keeper of his of his covenant 
Man khashiya ar-Rahmana bil-ghaybi wa jaa bi qalbi munib Whoever feared the most merciful in the unseen and came with a heart returning in repentance. And every one of them will have two gardens just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in Surah Ar-Rahman وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ But for he who has feared the position of his Lord are two gardens. Do you want all this or do you want to go to Jahannam? The choice is yours. I will leave you to this. For this, for you to sit down and contemplate. Look at your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it in a good state or in a bad? And make the right choice today for as you will be asked. For as you will be asked about all that you did, be it small or big. هذا وصلوا وسلموا على نبيكم كما أمركم بذلك ربكم فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك نستغفرك اللهم ونتوب إليك اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من النار وما أو نعوذ بك من شر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل اللهم يا منزل الكتاب ويا مجري السحاب هازم الأحزاب انصر إخواننا في فلسطين انصر إخواننا في فلسطين انصر إخواننا في فلسطين انصر إخواننا في اليمن انصر إخواننا في السودان اللهم كلهم معونا ونصيرا اللهم كلهم عونا ونصيرا اللهم فك أسرانا وأسر المسلمين وردهم إلى أهلهم سالمين أصحاء وردهم إلى أهلهم سالمين أصحاء اللهم من آذاهم فآذه اللهم من آذاهم فآذه اللهم من آذاهم فآذه عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة